एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज योर फेवरेट लेडी ऑब्वियसली टवक टू है एज एन द हाउस एंड टुडे गाइस आई डिसाइडेड टू ट्राई आउट द स्पोर्टी चैलेंज होपफुली आई एम नॉट लुकिंग लाइक दोस गोकोस la ba 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 1978 ya bona <laughs> so yeah comment below and tell me what are your thoughts on the sporty so guys welcome back to my youtube channel like to all of the new guys may you please uh, subscribe 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 and to all of those that have been subscribing thank you for your subscriptions your comments your notification not even notifications oh for your comments like I, i appreciate them a lot today guys as you can see the vibe is different it's actually my first episode yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's actually my first dear diary episode. And the reason why I am so happy it's simply because when I was young I used to keep like physical diaries where I would jot down all my thoughts, all the events, all my experiences up until one day. Hey. Up until one day my parents actually found that diary and it wasn't so good. It ended in tears. <laughs> so I decided that you know what let me summer share my experiences and my thoughts with my beautiful fans. So my dear diary episode episode to run you guys. So my first episode on dear diary I'm going to be relating my experience on my gap year, my career choice and my life during that gap year. So hello oh, for those of you that like stories, ne? Ngwasuka sukela. Mm. Once upon a time <laughs> so i matriculated in 2017 and before matriculating during my matric year i i had applied to i i was, I'd been in communication with one of the universities abroad so actually my dream was to go and study abroad it wasn't because i was tired of africa but then it was i wanted a change of scenery change of scenery like i just wanted, i just wanted to be in a different environment and experience a new life you know life after matric that's what i wanted so i'd been i'd been in communication with this one specific university and they'd been sending me my emails some post mails um regarding the university um everything that pertains the university so obviously in my mind i just said what you know what taboka 2018 come sunshine come rain come whatever may come you are going abroad my girl so during that year my friends knew what you better 2018 she's saying goodbye she's going overseas and yeah up until it was in june my mother convinced me she was like taboka you know what just apply a uct so she can be on the safe side i was so skeptical about it but then i was like okay let me just do it just to please her so i wrote my nbt test um th that test com com that test is a combo of mathematics english and science i got my results i applied to uct for two options it was in gn it was engineering civil Eng uh, it was mechanic what was it called or oh, it was electrical engineering as well as law yeah i, I applied for law as well as el Hey guys, electrical engineering. And even right now I'm asking myself who would like that okay, I wanted to be a lawyer really. Like I don't even know, but then I just applied. <laughs> so I applied at, at UCT and they told me that um my the, 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 the decision was deferred pending on my NSC results. And then three days before Bevala pay UJ in September, I was accompanying my friend to apply at UJ, at UJ the campus in Dorfontein. So when we got there, I decided, ah, let me just apply for the fun of it. So as well, I applied for law as well as electrical engineering. They gave me my student number. I could check on my student portal, everything. And then, boom. 2017 and that and then boom we're waiting for 2018 now 2018 results were re results were released i had done pretty well i got a bachelor pass as well as um as well as what as well as the distinction and my marks were not so bad they were fine not to my expectation cause I mean, I feel like i was expecting on 90 in all my subjects but then they were below 90 but it wasn't bad so okay fine you see team ah rejected me I was like okay it's fine you guys have rejected me like it's okay anyway I feel I'm going overseas that kind of attitude okay fine um overseas they gave me they, they wrote an email and they're like your place has been replaced by one of the top achieving students so because of that we won't be able to admit you this year you can kindly re as in rewrite your exams and probably apply the next year hey 
I was so broken. I couldn't believe it. I was so shocked. It was like, how can they do this to me? After promising me, and they, they are rejecting me. Like, I was so crushed. I couldn't believe it. I literally spent a week depressed, like heartbroken, as if been done to you guys. That's how bad it was. It was actually better than that. I, I, I felt like I could like remove my heart and put it on the side and just carry on with life because that's how bad it was. And then... After a week, I decided, you know what? All hope is not lost. I still have UJ, by the way. So, man, again, now UJ was now actually an option. So, I started going through my student portal, finding out what's happening. Like, they haven't, they, they haven't responded. They haven't told me if I've been accepted, if I've been rejected. What's happening? And... I contact I contacted the student uh, registrar's office and they told me that I failed to respond to my email and I failed to submit my documents. I was so angry, like guys, like really, how could they do this to me? So not by choice, it wasn't my choice. I now had to take a gap year. Imagine I had to take a gap year. You reality kicked in you guys like taking a gap here not by choice it was so bad i felt like a failure all the emotions came flooding back like everything was just so bad like i couldn't believe it who would say this is really me last year i had this big dream that by 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 may i'll be overseas and then now i'm just stuck at home i've got nothing to do days turned into weeks weeks into months i couldn't do it i was so depressed and i was like one one monday morning i decided you know what you've got no choice to work up because you're just so bored beyond repair so somewhere go for an interview go for job hunting so i started job hunting my first job hunting experience fine I went, to the, I went to this building and it was a call center. So they needed my CV as well as my documents. And on top of that, they wanted me to pay an amount of money in order for me to do some training. Ah, I was shocked. I came here looking for a job. That means I do not have any money. And then there is you telling me that I need to pay some money for, for training. Ah, I was like, you know what, you guys, sorry, goodbye. I cannot do this. I went back home. And then I was like, what should I do? Should I sell? And then I thought, ah, selling, what do people think? You know that kind of mentality? Like, I've just passed my metric. Everyone knows that. I told them that I'm going over sees and then the next thing they'll see me on the street selling hey no shame i can't do this and then there was this advert there was this restaurant and then there's this advertisement that they're, that they're looking for a waitress i went to that restaurant i spoke to the manager i the manager surprised me he was like um this advert is not for a restaurant but then it's for a bar so the waitress that we're looking for is going to work in a bar <laughs> and then i thought a bar like what will i tell my parents Uguti, i found a job and i'm going to be working in a bar i'm going to be dealing with with just working in a bar well i knew on set that my parents would refuse so i told the manager that thank you for thank you for thank you for considering me but then i will not be able to take this job i won't be able to take up your offer then that's how my dream of becoming an that, that's how my dream of of becoming a waitress not that it was my dream but then that's how my job hunting experience in a bar ended yeah and i went back home and then i decided you know what I've got an uncle, man. I've got an uncle who's got a printing company, a graphic designing company. Let me just somewhere try him. But then this is the strategy. When I go to him, I won't ask him to hire me. I'll just ask him to consider me as a volunteer. I, I'll just do everything and anything because I do not have I do not have any idea with designing. I've never designed before. Of course, I know how to I know how to operate a computer. But then when it comes to designing, I just do not know anything. The next day, I dressed up, went to him spoke to him i explained with that straight face you know my um I, i'm taking a gap here this year and may you please kindly um hire me as a volunteer i'll do anything and everything just hire me and then he was like okay i understand my mshana it's okay the job is yours but then right now i didn't have any budget for hiring another person so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be giving you money for transport as well as for lunch but then you'll be working here as a full-time employee that was okay with me i had no problem with that Okay, fine. I started working. I was now employed. You know that feeling? I was now employed. As much as I wasn't earning anything, I started working. I was every day in the morning. I knew what I have to go to work. So it was actually kind of fun. First day at work, it was a very bad experience. Like, I, it was just that 
big transition from being a high school student to being in a workplace whereby you, you're faced with adults and you're the only young person and everyone just expects you to be mature just that kind of work setup of course my colleagues were so friendly because they understood that i was just fresh out of out of high school but then at times i had to adjust the kind of lifestyle that they were having so but then my dream of going to varsity well it wasn't all lost and gone i started considering my options and then i remember that there is this university that my aunt attended let me somewhat apply and see what happens so i applied to that university first time i applied for psychology <laughs> i applied for psychology and then after that they sent me as in the responded via email and they told me that they'd accepted me ah guys i was so happy that ah oh, i've been finally accepted okay it was in may they accepted me for august intake okay fine i was excited but then i thought psychology like do i even want to be a psychologist and then i decided ah, let me do some research and at work i was no longer working a month i was now busy concentrating on on finding careers imagine I don't even know i don't even know what i want to do in my life so i started going i started browsing the net and i said should, should, should i be a medical doctor and then i was like but the salary is good and the perks of being called dr dobe dr daboka ah that sounds like a good name and then i decided but i'm scared of blood like i'm scared of needles will, will i be able to survive and then i was like no i can't be a medical doctor second option I was like, probably I can be an actress. It sounds like it's fun and I'll be rich. And actually, I'm talkative. I've got this energy. Probably I should be an actress. And then I decided, ah, but being an actress, being, a, being an actress, I still have to go for auditions. What if they do not hire me? What will I do? And then I did more research. And then I found different careers. And then there was this career. It was what was it? So, what was socio, sociology? And then I was like, what, what will I be doing in that? And then finally, up until I decided on biotechnology, at first I was so skeptical and I was like, what is biotechnology like? Will I be stuck in a lab the whole day? Like, will I survive that? After all, I want a career that is engaging. I want a career where I'll be able to interact with different people. And then finally, I requested, I sent an email to the varsity and I was like, may you please change my course from psychology to biotechnology? And looking at my results, they're like, okay, it's fine. We can change. Then they changed. So... I was now in June. Ah, I told my uncle, like, hey, Malume, Umshana has been admitted at university, and unfortunately, um, I'm quitting my job because <laughs> I'm going to university in August. So I need to prepare. <laughs> um, I quit my job in July because I was going to varsity in August. Hey, guys, fast forward to August. Life happened. I didn't go to varsity. <laughs> Yo, it is now back to square one. Like, back to feelings of of being a failure back to all the depressing emotions it was so bad and this time around it hit me so hard like it hit me very very hard and then i decided like what should i do should i go back to my uncle and request for a job and then I, obviously those feelings of pride and thinking i ah, when i go back to him what will he think so i decided you know what i won't do that so at that time i was reading rich dad poor dad's books by robert kiyosaki so i was now motivated it was now my new passion you know what i want to become an entrepreneur i want to become a business person so i asked my mother i was like mommy you know what me i was like mom may you please buy me a box of avocados i want to start my own business she asked me she was, she was like are you going to be able to do that i was like yes mom trust me i've been reading robert kiyosaki's books and i've been motivated you know what i'm so doing this comrade hey <laughs> she bought me that box of avocados first day i went to the street with my box of avocados and by the way those avocados were so fresh so beautiful and so like not even good looking but then they were so appetizing just from looking at them first day i went to the street with my beautiful small table and i was dressed so smartly and i went with my box five minutes standing not even one person asked me guti um sis, boza, how much are your avocados like i just I was like you know what i can't do this like i stood for almost 30 minutes and no one asked me for the price and then when i saw my previous principal coming i wasn't coming my way i just picked up my table and took my box of avocados and i was like ah if she sees me sitting on the street what will she think what will she say of me she would think would probably i failed in life like why, why what am i doing on the street I went back home. When I got home, I started crying. 
When my mother came back, she was like, Tobaka, what's wrong? I then related the story to her, what had happened. And then she convinced me. She was like, you know what, my child, that's how life is. Just not mind what people say. You know, that kind of lecture, that motivation, you know, that's how it was. Second day, I was like, you know what, Tabaka, I'm going to do this. I went back to the street. And this time around, I changed my marketing strategy. Instead of just looking at people passing by, I started marketing. I started a new marketing strategy of calling them and greeting them and on that day to your surprise to your surprise my box of avocados i sold literally everything in that box all my avocados were sold and i went back i went back home with my 150 rents and that was my first successful business like i was so proud of myself i finally did this and then weeks turned into months it was around september when i got a call from my uncle he was like i hate that you didn't go to university may you please come back a business scene and help out because you're actually an asset it was enjoyable working with you you had working you've got all the qualities so may you please come back so i decided was like, okay fine let me just go back and work with them like there's no harm in that so my business i'm avocado was it right now to stop because i was not going back into the world of printing the this time around i was going back with experience with knowledge because i knew how to print business cards invoice books to design to do everything and this time around it was enjoyable because i was not acquainted with the work experience with the work environment so that's how it was that's how my gap year ended and then the next year i was then finally done with everything and i finally went to university and currently i'm studying biotechnology and Guys, what I learned from my gap year experience is that I discovered a lot about myself. I discovered things that I didn't even know that I can do. Firstly, I didn't even know that I was cut out for business because in high school I was doing sciences. Secondly, I didn't even know that I was good in marketing. Like, thirdly, I didn't even know that I had it in me to design, like, literally designing a business card, like a whole business card. So those are the those are the experiences that I went through in my in, in my gap year. And it was a fun year. I learned a lot about myself. Who Tavoka really who who is Tavoka? I guys is long. I learned a lot about myself and I discovered a whole new level about Taboka. and that was my gap year experience but then as in if you're taking a, if you decide on taking a gap year just do something discover yourself and your skills your knowledge just expand your knowledge and you will thank me later thank you for tuning into my video may you please kindly comment below and tell me what are your thoughts on taking a gap year tell me how you experienced your gap year let us just keep the conversation going let's just keep the conversation heated thank you for your Thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. Till we meet next time. Oh, by the way, for those of you that are new to my channel, I've pre I have posted previous videos on financial literacy. Be sure to check them out on the links below. I love you. See you soon. Thank you for watching my Viber video, you guys. And don't forget to comment on my sporty challenge. Thank you.